Let's write down one difference and one similarity between wave P and wave Q. As you can see here on the key we given, wave P is the solid line while wave Q is the dotted lines. So let's go ahead and look at the two lines and see if we can identify one difference and one similarity. So we have 6.1. Uh, let's start with the difference and then we're gonna move to uh, the similarity very soon, right? So looking at uh, with P, you will realize that with P, it has an amplitude of 15 millimeters, right? And then with Q on the other hand, has an amplitude of 10 millimeters. So they're different in that way. One wave has an amplitude of 15 millimeters, while the other wave has an amplitude of 10 millimeters. Just to remind you, what is amplitude? Amplitude is the maximum displacement from rest or equilibrium position. So we're seeing that uh, they're different because of the amplitudes, right? Uh, so now let's go ahead and look at the similarity. What do they have in common? Let's go ahead and look at the similarity. If you pay attention uh, to the graph, right, you will realize that from point B to point D, we have one wavelength, right, from point B to point D. And then uh, that distance is 100 millimeters. That's for wave P. But then for wave Q, from a point, from this point here, uh, that is at the same place with point B, and then this point here, which is at the same place with point D, that distance will also be a hundred millimeters. So from that, we know that they have the same wavelength because from B to D, it's one wavelength, right? So what they have in similar is the wavelength, right? So we have wavelength uh, for the similarity, while for the difference, uh, we have the amplitude. Uh, let's move to 6.2. So 6.2, 6.2.1. Uh, for wave pattern P, write down there. So now we're paying attention to wave pattern P. Uh, don't forget, wave pattern P is the one that is solid, right? So 6.2.1 says two points that are out of phase. Two points that are out of phase. So we need to define what out of phase is so that we can know exactly what we're talking about. We say that two points are out of phase if one, this is one of the conditions, right? You don't write this in your answer sheet. I'm just writing it down so that you can see what we're talking about, right? So one, they have the same displacement. So if they have the same displacement uh, from equilibrium, so same displacement, from equilibrium, right? So we have the same displacement from equilibrium. And then number two, they don't have one wavelength between them. Yeah, they don't have one wavelength between them. They do not have one wavelength between them. Because if they have one wavelength between them, then those uh, two points would be in phase instead so here we don't want to uh, have that so let's go and look at the points so that uh, we can determine uh, points that are out of phase so if you look at point a and point b right they all have the same displacement from equilibrium right just in the opposite direction but they have the same displacement but they don't have one wavelength in between them because from a to B, it's not quite a wavelength. So we have half a wavelength actually from A to B. So we can say that A and B are two points that are out of phase since they don't have one wavelength between them, right? And then other points that we can name A and D. A and D are out of phase. And then uh, B and C, they're also out of phase, right? If the equation, so let me say out of phase here. Let me just say out of phase here. If the equation was saying in phase, then we would have uh, A and C. 
A and C, they have one wave like in between them. So they will be out of phase. And then B and D, B and D would also be uh, in phase because they have one wave like in between them. So that's what we're talking about when you're talking about in phase and out of phase, right? Let's move to 6.2.2. So 6.2.2 state that uh, let's determine the amplitude of the wave for uh, wave pattern P. So wave pattern P, let me just erase these lines, uh, is the one with a solid line. We can see clearly that uh, the amplitude will be at 15 uh, millimeters, right? So the amplitude is at 15 millimeters. So the answer for 6.2.2, the amplitude is 15 millimeters, right? But then you can also convert this to centimeters by dividing by 10. So 15 divided by 10 is equal to 1.5 centimeters, right? And then if the question was saying in meters, then you would divide, you would divide uh, 1.5 by 100, right, which was going to be 0 0.015 meters. Right, uh, let's move to 6.3. Uh, just to recap, amplitude, maximum displacement from rest position. 6.3 says, uh, let's define the term frequency of the wave in west. Uh, that is the number of waves passing a point in one second. The number of waves passing a point in one second. Right, let's do 6.4, uh, 6.4.1. So 6.4.1 is saying that for wave pattern Q, so now we're paying attention to the dotted lines, right? Uh, let's determine, actually let's calculate the frequency of the wave, right? So let's look at Q and see which information we have so that we can know what we are supposed to use to find the frequency of the wave. So we have we are given the period right because we know that uh, let me show you on the sketch uh to complete one wavelength right so from this starting point to this point here it takes 1.5 seconds you can see the time on the x-axis right that is the time on second so we can see that uh the period is equals to 1.5 seconds right as the period is the time it takes to complete one wave so the frequency will be equals to one divided by the period but what is the period we know fully well that the period is 1.5 right and that will all be equals to 0 0.67 hertz and that is the uh, frequency of our wave and then uh, the last question 6.4.2 speed of the wave we want the speed of the wave uh, we know fully well that v is equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength right so v will be equal to 0 0.67 multiplied by the wavelength so what is the wavelength the wavelength is a hundred millimeters but we know that we're not supposed to use millimeters but to use meters instead so how do we convert millimeters to meters right so if you want to convert millimeters to centimeters you would divide by 10 and then if you want to divide convert centimeters to meters you would divide by 100 right and then our final answer would be 0 0.067 meters per second